Definitely. I don't know. I got one of those like instant colds because I was working uh, two days ago. And then over the shift, I was just feeling shittier and shittier. Um, and then I was like, oh, maybe I'm uh, sick. And then I'm sick. So, yeah, one of those just, bam. It happens like that, doesn't it? No, yeah, it's unfortunate. So, uh, well, uh, how, how are you doing, Isaac? Doing all right. Uh, been on a bit of a bender for the last few days. But, uh, you know, just, just taking, a, taking a day by day, right? Mm-hmm. D- uh, don't don't question. What what do you exactly mean by bender? If I, if I may ask. Copious amounts of uh liquor, uh weed, and a few other things. Okay, that's what I thought. I was just just making sure. I just just so we're on the same page. You know, can't yeah, can't course. go the six cast without um declaring um such things. But mm-hmm. oh, that's mm-hmm. that's nice. That's nice. Um. What was I gonna ask? Oh, Isaac, uh, congrats on the Russell Westbrook uh going to the Clippers. Um yeah, thank you. It's I'm happy he gets to stay home, you know. Too bad the Lakers don't know how to run a team. Yeah. But oh. now he's going to the Clippers, a storied organization for knowing how to run a team. Probably, <laughs> so, you know. Uh that's gonna be fun. But um they, yeah, sorry he didn't go to the Bulls. Uh, yeah, it's fine. The, the Bulls are going to hell this year, I think. Um yeah. That's just the way it is. One of these days, finally see the Bulls get their ring. Oh my gosh! Sorry, I the this cold has drained literally all of my energy. We're gonna do this six cast, but Are you sure? we can, we can no, 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 no. I want to do it. It's also like after tomorrow, I am just slammed with work, so it would oh, just yeah. make the most sense. No, no, I I can do this. Um, all right, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, what was I gonna say though? Uh, fuck. Are the Clippers even like in the standings to make the playoffs right now? Yeah, they're they're up there. I mean, they're they're not like favorites. Um, let me. I don't know exactly where they are. They're ooh, definitely ooh. better than the Lakers, which is yeah. They're like fourth in the West right now, so they're doing all right. Yeah, they're doing all right. Okay. I I they're forgot the Kings, which is really weird to say, but uh, yeah, yeah. I forgot that uh never mind. Oh god, that lamp's too hot. Sorry, I'm turning that off. Okay. Woo! Um no yeah. I forgot he was even on like the Utah Jazz. like got traded to the Jazz. I thought right. he was kind of just out in the void. So uh, right. no yeah. Um I don't know. Uh, I, besides uh drinking and uh smoking, uh you do anything this weekend? Uh you know, I did read a little bit about Burundi. Uh, we got oh. big Burundi week. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, I don't know let's if do you it. Notice this, um, but so for the United Nations Climate Change Action, Burundi and a few other developing countries are actually taking some pretty drastic steps. Burundi itself. Uh, let me find the fact. Um, so Burundi's planning to pr- provide clean and efficient cook stoves to three hundred and eleven thousand households, to re- electrify eight hundred schools and health centers, and to install fifty eight electricity mini grids in rural communities between twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty six. They're also looking to increase its total area of forest cover by about twenty percent by twenty twenty five. So both really cool things. They're doing more than we are, um, probably, uh, and so that's that's always good. Um, Another big story. Uh, they're also camp. Burundi's also campaigning, uh, currently to basically, I guess, draw back, or I think the article said woo back. Yeah, I saw um, that. <laughs> yeah, uh, refugees who fled because of their like coup back in like twenty fifteen. Um, yeah. So that's you know it's it's good that they're seeing a little bit of signs of stability. Uh, I think they have like two hundred thousand refugees have returned to Burundi since twenty seventeen. I think um so always always good to see uh but yeah pretty pretty good week for uh burundi in terms of news yeah i'm seeing this wholesome headline of the a refugee baker from congo builds his mm-hmm. business in burundi and he's just smiling there with some bread hold on i'll share the screen mm-hmm. a very looks a very yeah, happy absolutely. man um there is it oh yeah there he is looks like, looks like oh. some good ass bread too ah dang mm. What type of bread do you think that is? I I, I don't know. I'm not really I, a big I, bread guy, if I'm being honest. I know like what, what? that's not ciabatta. I can tell you that's not ciabatta and that's not <laughs> hard. I don't uh, think that's sourdough. 
Um, that sounded like a punchline to a joke or something. Sorry. Um, I thought it ain't no ciabatta, that's for sure. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. It looks good though. I, I I would I would chomp that. So. Oh, all right. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just having to share. Also, I'm gonna take this sweater off. I'm really hot. So, uh, Isaac, strip, uh, strip, you, strip, I'll let you cover. Strip, 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 strip. Hey, there we go. Hey, just just in time for Magic Mike. Am I right or am I right? Oh, you didn't hear that. Just in time for Magic Mike, right, Mills? Oh yeah, I never got to see that movie. Fuck, I forgot about that. Not yet. Not yet. No, yeah, not yet. I I haven't seen any movies at the theater in a long time. That or by a long time. Yeah, the last one was Lyle Lyle Crocodile for me. So really? You know, no, wait, that's not true. It was Avatar. No, I'm tripping. My bad. Okay, because Lyle, uh, Lyle Crocodile. <laughs> I was like, you definitely saw some stuff over like Winter Break because mm-hmm. I. Yeah, I saw Avatar. In Winter Break, oh, I was like, what was the other one? Uh, um, what did you see? Oh, the menu. The menu. I think the menu is the most recent one. Oh, okay. What was the last one I saw in theaters? Oh, I was Puss in Boots, I think. No. Oh, yeah, what was that? That was amazing. Um, but speaking of watching movies, this is a special one, at least for me. And we're covering the film Paprika today. Um, let me, I'll, I guess I'll do a synopsis, but then I can try to um, do my own after that. Da, 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 Paprika, directed by Satoshi Kone, uh, came out in 2006. Um, the synopsis is This is your brain on anime. Um, when a machine that allows therapists to enter their patient's dream is stolen, all hell breaks loose. Only a young female therapist can stop it. Paprika. Um, so yeah, that's the movie. Uh, I've seen this before, and um, I don't know. I not only this has been on my like rewatch list for a long time now, uh, but then also I was like, oh, interested what Isaac would think. Um, and it's kind of interesting movie to talk about on the Sticks cast. So Isaac, what did you think of Paprika? You know, I think you'll happy to be, to I'll be I think you'll be happy to hear it. I I enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um it's I wouldn't say it's trippy, but it definitely does mess with you a little bit, which I loved because it mm-hmm. was definitely just like ridiculous at parts, which was and they they did it in a really fun way. Um because obviously, you know, the whole point of the film is hey, we're dealing with like, you know, people's brains and their subconscious, right? Um and so basically it just gets really chaotic, right? So I was a big fan. Um I didn't know it was happening half the time. But yeah. it was it was a great it was a great time. Yeah. If anyone says they knew what was like happening, like no. first time they're fucking liars. Um mm-hmm. I like especially when the director his goal of his films is literally like he's expressed how a film isn't like worth watching if it isn't like challenging you but he takes that to kind of like a extreme degree in Mm -hmm. a way um and i think a little bit too much in this film um but Mm -hmm. like yeah no i i'm glad you uh liked it this is definitely the most chaotic um because it's funny because like the movie itself is about dreams and it's both like night dreaming but also daydreaming as well daydreaming is a significant part of it Mm -hmm. um but the film is a lot structured like a dream where it's kind of hard to keep up with it um, in and of itself. Um, so, yeah, it's really confusing. But, um, Isaac, I'm interested if um, – how should I put this? If you, you were giving your best shot to do, like, a quick one-minute summary – um, I'm actually before that, so we avoid if like people join with the watches and no spoilers. Um, mm-hmm. I also think, yeah, I think it's really good. It's some of the ba- best, like in terms, in terms of animation ever made. It's still like the colors are so nice. The editing is insane. Um, and, uh, obviously the fucking music is baller as balls in this movie. Um, it's made by the guy that also does the guts theme song or whatever the sad theme song um so and his music there's not 
it's very like you can't really put a genre to it it's really weird um mm-hmm. but it was my i think the main theme song of this was my second most listened to song last year so um yeah really good movie um but isaac if you were to give i'm gonna give you one minute and you, i want you to try to explain what happened in this film you think you could do it uh god um probably not great uh, one minute starts now all right so it's all right so it what year is it made again 2007 2007 all right so it's just if you've seen inception it just imagine that right um but instead of christopher nolan it's it's anime right um so basically they make this like machine that's like oh i can see your dreams and i can enter your dreams but like it's a prototype so there's no like restrictions and stuff right and that's the whole issue because then they start getting people going into other people's dreams when they're not supposed to be in there and then like uh through a series of events how do i get there hold on all right so basically inside the dreams there's like diff because obviously there's like the conscious and the subconscious right wow i only have 15 seconds left all right and then so basically they're like they're a bunch of people and then they go in a parade and then there's a big parade and then they're trying to stop the the bit i don't want to spoil it but they want to no. stop the guy who right. stole it you know and, uh, and then they uh they yeah it's it's all dreams yeah that's, that's difficult that's really difficult actually i can't lie <laughs> That was really good. That was impressive, though. I mean, you covered a lot of the, a lot of the beats of it. Um, but yeah, there. I mean, there's a lot to un unpack. Um, and yeah, the Christopher Nolan, um, definitely he, um, he definitely ripped this shit off. Yeah, yeah, he, and he didn't really, <laughs> yeah. he didn't no, credit he didn't. it. That was the other thing I've really been. I kind of don't like him as much anymore because it's like, oh, yeah. okay, dog, you're too cool for mm-hmm. this. Fuck you. Um, but yeah, like. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they there's a the device, the DC Mini that's used for the hijacking dreams is like stolen, and they're trying to figure out how, who it is. And then I'm not even going to be. I'll be honest. I'm still kind of confused of who exactly steals it because mm-hmm. it's like sort of Himuru, who's like the second developer of it, but then the guy that is also works with them uses him to take yeah. the device. Mm-hmm. And then he's, I don't, I'm still kind of a little bit confused about his motive. Cause then he's, he's also like wants to work for the chairman. The chairman's motives, I think are the most <clears throat> clear and obvious yeah. in this film. And it, it, they're still really cool of uh, the mm-hmm. chairman is like this dude on a wheelchair. And the whole time he's hating on this machine because he's on a wheelchair and he's like, hey, dreams mean more to me than you, which. Yeah, exactly. You know, maybe in this current landscape of talking about like ableism, I don't know where that's it's, but whatever. It's it's, a if movie. it's his view. It's his view. It's yeah, view. We're not. Yeah. That. And like he does have a point. I like this idea of like. To someone else in some YouTube video I remember watching a while ago said that like uh, dreams, right? I mean, sleeping, but, like, dreams take up an insane amount of, like, our lifetime, you know? Yeah. Like, not only do we dream while we're sleeping, and those dreams can ra- range from, I like how they put it, where it's, like, earlier on in the REM cycle, it's, like, sh- uh, shorts, and then later on becomes, like, full feature-length films. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's the combination of that, and then... Uh, Oh, and then just daydreaming too, which is like such a big right. part. And I think that's that's a lot of like the officer is doing sort of. I like to think because like he's not getting transported into a computer. He's just kind of like, I don't I don't do that that alone of like him on the yeah like the weird website and then yeah, it's wild. Um, because I don't know if that's just him strapping into the DC man. It's yeah. Um. But yeah, so that that chairman guy or whatever, he's like, yo, yeah, like dreams are so they're like this holy ground. And he sees this like development of technology then infiltrating Mm -hmm. that holy ground. So then he wants to like dominate it or control it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think there's probably a message in this film about like. There's definitely something about controlling dreams. I think that's a big theme here in terms of like. You have the main doctor sort of having an odd relationship with like her alter ego self with Paprika. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and she's not able to dream. And then you have the detective who is trying to, who's having trauma with like his dream of being a filmmaker and stuff like that. And then also like a friend. Uh, it's yeah, and the, the, he's trying to control. I don't know. So it's a lot of just it's a weird relationship between our dreams. Um, and the main thing is that what cha- chaos erupts when you merge dreams together. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, I don't know, Isaac, what did you take away from who's your favorite uh character in this film? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I would definitely say that it's, I would definitely say that, uh, it depends. All right. It see it gets tricky now because then it depends on what your definition of a character is, right? Because you have people. Um, uh, what's the main lady's name? Really bad with names still. Oh, 30. well. To be fair, she has like three fucking names. It's yeah, like yeah. Atsuko. I think that's her name. Mm-hmm. Atsuko is like her one name, and then Atcham is another, and then right. like the doctor name. Um. Yeah, I know what you're talking about though. There's a lot. Um, yeah. so it, it really gets complicated because then you have one character splitting into like two or three in that case. Um I honestly I honestly don't know. I think just like come back to me. Let me, let okay. me think about this for a second. How well, about you? Who is your favorite character? I I still like only maybe just because I fully understand that I like the chairman the most. I think Mm -hmm. that what I gained the most from my second rewatch is I understood the detective character a bit more um, and liked his story a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. Because I think maybe he was just just a lot more lost on me. But I I kind of like that relationship he has of there's I think there's like someone maybe there is an actual person like he made a film with that like either died or kind of went away. But also it was like his artistic self that died as well. I think that's just kind of fascinating. Um, and I I also it's clear that the director is putting himself into that role a bit of like he's also a filmmaker. Cause this was um this was Satoshi Kone's last like film, and then he was planning on changing his career um a bit, but then he died. So um right. yeah, that's why like at the end of the film you see the detective look going into a theater and it's Satoshi Kon's own like movies as the posters. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you see the Tokyo Godfather's poster? Either? Yeah. 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 So I don't know. It's, it's wild because, and it's clear. I think that's also sort of what hurts the film a little bit is it's clear. Like Satoshi Kon, like this was his biggest, like most ambitious creative project. And he wanted to go out with a bang, but I also don't mm-hmm. think he really gave a fuck. So right. he was like, I don't give a shit if like the way this film is structured actually like I think in his other films, there is also this immersion of like reality and something else. And it works a lot. This one, I think it does it so hard that it low key impacts and hurts a little bit of what the film is trying to say at some mm-hmm. points and takes away some emotional weight from it. But it's also like, who the fuck cares, dude? You made like some amazing movies beforehand and it's like if it's your last one like go for it why not yeah fair um oh then one more before i go back to you on your character um Mm -hmm. i like to say that uh there are no that Aaliyah um when we were watching this together um she says that the uh who's a little scientist man um whatever oh the bald guy yeah yeah Uh, (laughs) fuck um i have no idea what his name is yeah um but if they were to do a live action adaptation, he would easily be Danny DeVito. Um, that would be yeah. the perfect yeah. casting. So yeah. um, <laughs> Netflix, Netflix. Oh God, yeah. This this movie. Oh, well, they already did do a shitty live action uh, remake of it. It's called Inception. Oh, we'll get fucked. Okay. Anyways, That's um. Shitty, man. I, don't, I literally like I can't like I like the five star movie. That's like one of the best movies ever made. I was well, so, like I watched Inception in maybe like when I was a sophomore in high school, and I really liked it. But um, I like I, I gotta I'm gonna I die on a sword for Satoshi Kon, so I'm always Fair. no I, I respect that. 
Um, it's the same thing with me with a, the other movies that were ripped off from Satoshi Kon, uh, like the Darren Aronofsky's uh, Black Swan or, right. and uh, Requiem for a Dream. Like, I really like those movies, but they kind of just take and don't really pay. Uh, I don't know, it just pisses me off, um, especially because if Americans, I think it's getting better. If Americans start to respect, like, anime a bit more, interest in some, like, there is anime that's just bad like it's like any other fucking media it's not better it's not worse um i don't know piss me off anyways isaac no, um get it. Yeah. but yeah back to, back to you if you thought of one uh yeah I, I mean honestly god i hate to be basic and just use the main character but honestly dr shiba mm. gotta give her props um you know i i'm a big fan of like multi-dimensional characters and especially in this case when you have literally a character with multiple characters inside you know i'm a big fan mm-hmm. of that um and you know it's really reminiscent of uh i don't know if you've seen it uh there's a series i think it came out like around 2015 2018 somewhere in that three year range mm-hmm. um it was called uh it invaded which is like a very 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 similar plot sure. um or i guess concepts um definitely not sim- well yeah similar plot too um but it just you know she reminded me of a lot of just like the uh I guess the, just the 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 way that she and then her sub characters would navigate the world. Like you know, there was one point where Rebecca like stepped inside, like like Mar- like you know, like uh, Mario sixty four. She basically stepped inside like a poster. Yeah, you know, yeah, just yeah. Got a horse. That yeah. was sick. You know, I I really like that. I think having like again, just having a multi dimensional character with a lot of different characteristics and then having an identity crisis inside a dream. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah i would have <laughs> my def- definitely my favorite character i like the way you put that of like an identity crisis in a dream because i think a, a lot yeah. of people like low-key suffer that of some forms of like how they dream of themselves especially like daydreaming wise or like their dream you know their ambition or goal or dream might right. conflict with what they actually are or want to be um mm-hmm. yeah i because i can't like put to words the relationship between dr chiba and paprika it's really mm-hmm. interesting because like and she's clearly so linked to it that it's part of her like her subconscious like at, almost at all times right um but uh, yeah I, it's wild i don't know and the, the ending of the movie is so funny of just like her the the like oh it needs a little spice and then paprika is like yeah that's do, I, like i when I was rewatching, I was like, okay, maybe I can, I think I can do this. Maybe I can start to kind of explain it a bit. And then once it gets to like that final act, you just kind of have to give up. And then it's just like, um, yeah, I don't know. Cause yeah, then you have the chairman becomes a huge like spirit man who then just, I like the idea where he's like, I'm going to spread dreams to all the disabled people across the world and then he just blows up buildings for the fun of it or whatever <laughs> it's like what the um <clears throat> i don't know it's just funny um and then yeah paprika like they make a baby and a robot and the baby grows up by sucking the void of the chairman um yeah it's all weird yeah um what did you think of the parade uh sequence Isaac? i love all which one i loved all of the parade sequences <laughs> it's just a lot of fun like there was you know there was like the one where the dude the danny devito dude just like got inflated and he like yeah. blew up, you know? <laughs> and then there was the one where they had a bunch of like i i don't know how to explain it they had a bunch of like not Oh, fuck. Like, you know when they had a bunch of of like the guys who were like maybe like three foot tall but they also had like two foot tall heads you know they looked like bobbleheads oh yeah like eating each other that was a lot of fun it, it, it all was really fun and again that's going back to what i was talking about earlier about how just chaotic it was but at the same time i had a very clear vision despite all of that you know yeah. going on so I, lo- yeah. I loved all the parade sequences honestly probably the best part of the film yeah i th- i think that that's what sold me on it like especially like those parade like the like the muse that swelling music of it's like both like very cheerful but then it's kind of like nauseatingly like overwhelming and in a way and just all the image imagery going on of like the statue of liberty i don't know if you want to like just go down a rabbit hole like 
Go, uh, find that scene on YouTube and then see people's like interpretations of it in the comments. And it's just, there's so much going on. Um, and I, I am like, I am confused necessarily what the, the parade itself is as if, like, if it's just the carrier of the worldwide dream. Right. Right. right? Um, and maybe that's like, because then it's clear like that parade is in full fruition at the end and where I don't know because then that's where like Satoshi Kon's putting like the problems of like Japan or at least in 2007 in the parade mm-hmm. where you had like the workers uh, committing suicide mm-hmm. or um, I don't know some of them I saw like some people that point out on YouTube there's like the moms holding the babies but there's like money growing out of them or something like that and it's like mm-hmm. moms that purely have oh, kids yeah. just for uh the investment um mm-hmm. they and then there's like the homeless encampments um and there's like the mayors fighting for political power um but there's also just like simple shit like just like ducks and like toys and i it's so chaotic um but yeah i can't really Put my words to like what exactly that festival they're the parade itself is supposed to be, but um, mm-hmm. yeah, no, but um, cool, but I think I'm glad that you like the film at least. It's that yeah, of one, course. um, um, which one uh, do you like uh, more, this or Tokyo Godfathers? Honestly, I like this. I mean, like, I thought Tokyo Godfathers was really good, and I still think it's really good, but like. I don't know. I think this one's just like there's just a lot more depth, in my opinion, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, this it be like it's just like a complete monster in and of yeah, itself. It's a, yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, I also did you watch this like inebriated or anything like that, or were you watching the Stone? No, I watched. I watched this one Stone. Okay. Stone. <laughs> yeah. I. Yeah. I if can't I, if I did that high, I don't know how that would go, man. Your brain, like. This movie would it already makes hurts my brain a little bit once I finish it, but then it's also like oh, yeah. it's so cathartic mm-hmm. like finishing it. But it, I like yeah, if you're a high watching this, your brain would fucking explode. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I agree. Hold on. Oh yeah, I think yeah. Oh, sorry, but yeah, I think um. I, I I think I have to add this to the list of films I really want to watch high. Yeah. Um, like, for example, uh, what's the next one I have to watch? I'm about to watch uh, the first Mobile Suit uh, Gundam movie. Oh, um, that sounds from, like, fun. like, 1981, you know? Yeah. Um. But, yeah, it, it it's going on the list. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I maybe one of these days because yeah, i'll definitely be coming back to this film um yeah. it's one of those <laughs> um yeah no <laughs> so uh um fuck what was i gonna say <laughs> well, <Virginia Thotnels. laughs> yeah m- maybe um but yeah so isaac uh, what did you uh end up giving uh paprika i think i gave it a, a four out of five it was okay. really good. Yeah. It was really good. Love yeah. It. That's what, what it's you? it's for me. I think it's a four out of five. It's like hey, there we go. Yeah, Look there we that. go. Yeah. Who would have thought? It's it's the ideas and the ambition and the music and animations, like everything. It just it's clear. What's what's holding it back is that the director was just kind of like, fuck it. Um, which yeah. then kind of makes it a bit messy. Um that being said, I think that it, to a certain degree, I really I did like that because it is yeah. like I like it when directors kind of like reflect, I guess, themselves in their works, and it's different uh-huh. putting themselves in their work than reflecting it, right? Yeah, but I, I liked it. I thought it added a bit of character. Yeah, no, I like literally wouldn't change anything about this film at all. I just have mm-hmm. to like it's it's the way it's made. I wouldn't even change. I just have to reflect. Like, it, it, me giving it a five would assume. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, the only reason I don't give it like a perfect score is just I've seen what this guy can do with like a tiny bit more restraint and it becomes like a perfect film. Right. So I think that's fair. Um, no, yeah. Um, but yeah, Isaac, you, you, you're, if you think about it, you are one, two, three, 
I think you're already halfway done of Satoshi Kon's main feature films. Really? So hey, there's there's only Perfect Blue and Millennium I, I, Actress that is on left. The list. I do I do really want to watch Perfect Blue. Yeah. I think that's going to be my next one, but we'll see. But yeah, and yeah. you're bored. I think Millennium Actress is also free on YouTube. Like Tokyo. Oh Godfather. really? Yeah. All right. Good to know. So, um, also, what probably doesn't help. This movie kind of makes me want to be, or at least know Japanese, because like it doesn't help yeah. that I'm having to read subtitles and the it's like very dense dialogue like scenes. Um, so that's the same thing as like fair. Ghost in the Shell is I wish I like knew Japanese because it was like part of it was like literally just kind of reading a novel because it's there's mm. so much dialogue. Right. Um, but yeah, so all right, well Isaac, I think we uh covered most of it um i don't know um is there a movie you have in mind you want to cover for next week so the audience knows let me uh let me pull up my list real quick and let's oh, distract yeah. them um let's see how should i distract you guys this time i've been playing um ocarina of time it's a really fun game even though it's uh probably it's older than me i think uh, maybe I'm not sure um it's really 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 fun game um all right got one got one what um, is it? so actually uh all yeah i think that would be fun actually no or... so have you ever seen have you ever seen lawrence of arabia <laughs> no i haven't <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we can do that. i like he chose like a four hour film but we can do it oh my god <laughs> we can do a shorter one it's fine no, I, mean, listen, I don't no, know you... if you've ever seen a four hour film i watched the Zack snyder uh justice league cut and I, mean, I had a good time let me uh, hold alternatively on. we could do we could do repo man the pianist uh oh wait wait wait, wait. is usual suspects could be good um you know what's really funny isaac so when you said the pianist I thought you were talking about the grand piano or whatever, which is like the somewhat obscure film. And it's about it's it's um about a guy who is like, oh, yeah, wait, I'll read the plot synopsis play. Oh, whoa. Uh, play or die moments before his comeback performance, a concert pianist who suffers from stage fright discovers a note written on his music sheet. OK, that doesn't help. Um, he has a sniper aimed at him, and if he plays the wrong note or whatever, then he dies. <laughs> so that's how it's like. No, I don't want to watch that. I mean, if you want to do that, but you choose. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll yeah. Figure so, it out. and well, they at least know the range, so they can watch all four or five of those films mm-hmm. in preparation. It'd be really funny. It's like we don't do Lawrence of Arabia, and they watch that the whole film. Um, oh yeah, that, I wanted to see really quick if it's that long or not. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's see, Lawrence of Arabia. It's a long one. I know that. Holy fuck! Two hundred twenty-eight minutes. So that's divided by minutes. That's almost yeah. It's almost four hours. Wow. Oh my god! Yeah. It is. It's twelve minutes off four hours. Holy. I shit. okay. Only because th- that might need to be something. Like wait till like spring break. Maybe. Okay, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But I'll we'll text I'll text about it. We'll figure out between one of those. Uh, all so, right. so, all right. Is there any final closing thoughts before we end the six cast? Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up!